Hello, I'm Eric Roby. And I'm Carla Schaefer, and this is Anne Arundel County Week in Review. Today we'll show you how to train for a triathlon, and we'll tell you how the fire department is prepared for a major disaster. Making headlines this week around the county? After a month of consideration and changes, the budget process is finally over. The County Council approved the budget recommended by County Executive Leopold by a 5-2 vote. The final document calls for design work to begin on a new Severna Park High School and another year of furloughs for county employees to close a revenue shortfall. The budget approved by the council also approved a three cent increase in the property tax and reductions to Anne Arundel Community College while maintaining funding to Anne Arundel County Public Schools. County Executive Leopold said of the vote, this was the most difficult budget we have faced in five years. I'm pleased that we were able to avoid layoffs of teachers in our public schools and fund a new Severna Park High School. While I disagreed with some changes made by the council, we will work to make the best of a difficult fiscal situation. Later this month, the council will consider whether to reduce the income tax rate charged to residents. The public hearing for that legislation is set for June 20th. Well, everyone has been gripped by the pictures and videos coming out of the Midwest or the tornado belt this week. Closer to home, our fire department picked up a piece of equipment that would aid citizens in a natural disaster whenever the disaster may occur. County Executive Leopold joined fire officials this week to unveil a new medical ambulance bus using a Homeland Security grant. The bus can help deal with bus accidents and train accidents, evacuations from hospitals and nursing homes, and tending to first responders during prolonged incidences. The ambulance bus has several unique features, including a generator, a slide-out stretcher system, an oxygen system that can handle 23 patients at once, and multiple suction units for airway management. The bus will be stored at the Harmons Dorsey Fire Station. This week in Hot Topics, the Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to 1,286 calls for service. This included more than 1,000 emergency medical calls and 92 fire calls. This week, a Pasadena family awoke to the sound of a smoke alarm activating in their home and thick smoke hampering their escape from the residence. In addition, two people were critically injured in an early morning car accident in the Linthicum area of the county. With us now to tell us more about these incidents is Division Chief Michael Cox of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. Chief? Thanks, Carla. The first incident occurred just before 6 a.m. on Tuesday, May 24, 2011. At this time, Anne Arundel County firefighters responded for a reported dwelling fire in the 7800 block of Elizabeth Road in the Pasadena area of the county. The first unit to arrive on location reported a one-story, single-family dwelling heavily involved in flames. At that time, an exterior fire attack was initiated by the first arriving crews. In all, it took 23 firefighters about 15 minutes to bring the one-alarm incident under control. There were two residents home at the time of the incident. They were alerted to the fire by an activated smoke alarm and did escape without injury. The fire, which originated in the interior portion of the home, was determined to be accidental in nature and is being blamed on an electrical malfunction and failure. The Red Cross was also called to assist the residents. A damage estimate for the fire was not immediately available. However, fire investigators advised the structure and contents were a total loss. In another incident, county firefighters responded to an early morning accident on Wednesday, May 25, 2011. The incident occurred just after midnight in the area of Hammonds Ferry Road and Nursery Road in the Linthicum area of the county. The first arriving units on the scene reported a single vehicle collision with entrapment. In all, it took responding crews about 30 minutes to free both trapped occupants. The occupants, an 18-year-old female and a 23-year-old male, suffered life-threatening injuries as a result of the incident. They were transported priority one to the R. Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Center located at the University of Maryland Hospital in Baltimore. Carla? Thanks, Chief. County law enforcement officials advised that the exact cause of the accident remains under investigation. Well, some of us might not have been ready for that triathlon in Annapolis last week, but there's always next time. In this week's Community Spotlight, Carolyn Ryan joins us from the North Anne Arundel Aquatic Center with information on a new training program designated for tri runners. Carolyn. Thanks, Eric. We're here at the North Arundel Aquatic Center where we have a new program, which is our beginner triathlon program. And I'm joined by Carrie Robbins, who's the instructor for the triathlon program. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Carrie, tell us a little bit about this beginner triathlon program. Well, it is a 12 week program, and basically, we go over the inter 
introductory part of all three disciplines of triathlon, which is swimming, biking, and running, from the basics to covering all areas of triathlon, so transition, equipment that's needed, what to get ready to do for race day, prepping for race day. I actually develop a 12-week program for the athletes that they can follow and go online and see what they can do each day to prepare for their particular race. Okay. Now, a lot of people would probably find a triathlon kind of an intimidating <laughs> project to take on. How do you kind of break it down for newbies? Well, what I do is I, I always try and make it the simple, the better. You just want to take it step by step. You don't want to overload them with a lot of information. A lot of them are just doing this for the first time. It may be their first time in the open water. It may be their first time at a bike or um, doing a longer distance running event. So it's just making it as simple as possible and as fun as possible too. Um, so you have a 12-week program going on right now that started a few weeks ago, and you have another program that's going to start this summer. Yes, and that is another 12-week program, which is a co-ed program leading up to a triathlon in the fall in October. So it'll be an exciting event, and so we're hoping a lot of people will come out and learn the basics for triathlon and have an actual triathlon event to train for. Great. And that event actually is the uh, Rec Deeds Tri-Challenge Sprint Triathlon held at our Fort Smallwood Park. So that one's a fun one. Yes. Fun race also. Well, we've got some of your participants here. I'll just ask them a couple of questions about how they're enjoying the program. And what is your name? My name's Kathy Gross, and the program's been excellent so far. Great introduction. I have not. I had never done a triathlon before signing up for Carrie's class, so I thought this would be a good introduction to get exposed to it and just doing it for fun. So I did my first one over in Severna Park at the Spy Pool, so it was an indoor swim, so that worked out well. And Carrie's doing a great job of deconstructing everything I thought I knew I, what I was doing, swimming and all of that, and kind of learning the right way, so it's been exciting. Great. Yeah. Great. You are. Hi, I'm Vicki Byerly, and I have not done a triathlon yet. I have lots of friends who are participating, so I'm here to get knowledge and courage to sign up for my first one, which I had the one on uh, my eye on in October that you spoke about. Um, but look at Carrie. She's just an incredible inspiration to all of us. Very good. And we have... Hi, Kim June. And tell us how you're enjoying the program so far. Have you done a triathlon before? No, I've never done a triathlon. This is really just something to keep in shape and I do swim and run and bike so I thought I would put it all together and I thought it was really interesting. I'd never seen a triathlon advertised so I saw it and it looked fun so I signed up for it so far. I think it's great. I've really enjoyed it. Well, thank you ladies all for being here. If, if you want more information on the triathlon program or any of our other recreation programs, please visit our website, www.aacounty.org slash rec parks. You can call us at 410-222-7313. Back to you in the studio. Well, I just opened up my pool and maybe I'll go swim some laps, although it's green right now, Carla. <laughs> but I know that I'm sure not ready for that kind of training just yet. Don't forget that you want to find out, if you want to find out more about this program and other healthy fitness ideas that you might like, join the department's Facebook page. You can like them. Go to or go to www.aacounty.org and click on the blue Facebook icon at the bottom of our county homepage. Well, there's more week in review to come. Take a look at the community calendar for what's happening around the county. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Ready or not, here I come. Mm. We see you, Gordy. Oh man, I can't play this game. That's okay, Gordy. Everybody's different. You're supposed to be shaped like that. We're round all over. Bodies come in all shapes and sizes. What's important is that you get exercise and eat healthy, fresh foods. Like what you get from a farm. Peaches. Watermelon. Strawberries. <gasps> well, this is awkward. It's cool. It's sweet. Fresh from the farm. Let's eat. Let's go to a farm. Welcome back. Well, in this week's Police Beat, Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy joins us to talk about an armed robbery that took place on May 23rd at the Carrollton Bank branch in Glen Burnie. Justin. Thanks, Eric. When officers arrived, they spoke with a female bank teller who stated that a male suspect entered the bank, displayed a handgun, and demanded money. The employee complied with the demands, and the suspect fled the location with an undisclosed amount of U.S. currency. Several officers searched the area, located the suspect operating a green pickup truck. It was headed northbound on Ritchie Highway. The suspect eventually fled on foot near Stranded Road and Norland Road in Baltimore City and was immediately apprehended. The suspect was charged with armed robbery, felony theft, and five counts of second-degree assault. And that suspect is Randall Paul Shreve, age 43, of 1426 Northshire Road in Baltimore, Maryland. We're going to move on now to our second incident. That one took place on May 23rd, about 11.50 in the morning. That's when officers from the Western District responded to the 7900 block of Orion Circle. That's in Laurel for a report of a domestic assault. Now, when officers got on scene, one officer was assaulted by a male suspect who then fled on foot. A foot chase ensued and the suspect was eventually taken into custody. Now, this was after a long struggle that required the use of non-lethal and less lethal techniques to subdue the suspect. The first officer, a three-year veteran, was injured and transported by paramedics to Baltimore Washington Medical Center for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. The second officer, a 13-year veteran, was transported to Baltimore Washington Medical Center for treatment of minor injuries. Both officers were later released. The suspect was transported to Laurel Regional Hospital for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. That suspect was later released from the hospital and charged with multiple counts of second-degree assault, false imprisonment, obstruction and hindering, also false statement to a police officer and two counts of resisting arrest. The suspect from that incident is Charlemagne Olson Jones, age 35, of 12012 Benjamin Street in Beltsville, Maryland. Now, folks, as always, if you have any information on the crimes or suspects we mentioned on the show, don't hesitate to call, email, or text your tip to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. It's available 24 hours a day, toll-free. That number is 1-866-7-LOCKUP. You can also text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274 637. Third option, visit the website, www.metrocrimestoppers.net. Remember, phone calls are not recorded and callers remain anonymous. You might be eligible for a cash reward of up to $2,000. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Justin. Great job again by our county police officers to catch the suspect. That sounds like a heck of a chase, Carla. Well, Eric, if you didn't get your garden planted in time for spring, don't worry. The Anne Arundel mm -hmm. County Historical Society Strawberry Festival is coming. In this week's Community Spotlight, Mark Chang talks to Skip Booth about the event. Mark? Thanks, Carl and Eric. I'm over here in Linthicum at the Benson Hammond House, which is at the corner of Aviation Boulevard and Andover Road. And with me today, I have Skip Booth, who is the president of the Anne Arundel Historical Society, and get a little information today about this beautiful property, about the Anne Arundel Historical Society, and this upcoming strawberry festival that they're having here. Skip, thank you for coming on the show. First of all, I'd like to ask you, tell us about this property out here. Well, the Benson Hammond House is the only house museum on the grounds of an international airport in the United States. The house that was built originally as a four-room, two-story brick house by Thomas Benson around 1828. Almost immediately thereafter, it was added on to, to accommodate the growing Benson family. Uh, around 1880, it was sold to the uh, Hammond family and uh, the Hammonds lived here up until 1945 when the land was purchased uh, by the city of Baltimore for the construction of Friendship Airport. Uh, today, after the airport bought the land, it pretty much uh, was used by the airport for storage and had fallen into disrepair. In the mid-70s, late 70s, the um, Anne Arundel County Historical Society arranged a uh, a lease with the well, the state at that time to rent the property in the house and to restore it. Uh, what you see today is the results of those efforts. We have about three acres here. 
with the um, Betts and Hammond house on it and several farm outbuildings that were brought here from other farms in northern Anne Arundel County. By the way, there were 130 plus farms that were bought for Friendship Airport. And this is the only one left standing on its original site. Most of them were torn down. This one um, was a survivor and we're lucky to have it. Thanks for the background information on this piece of property here. I know you work tirelessly on the Anne Arundel Historical Society as a leader of it. Could you tell the folks out there who don't know about the society a little bit about the society and how they can get involved in it? Well, we have a website, as everyone does nowadays. It's um, www.aachs.org. Org. It is. Um, it maintains this house, the Keithy Library in Glen Burnie, as a genealogical and historical research library, and also has two partner shops, one gift shops, one in this building, and one down in uh, Severna Park by the. Um, a trail. You can find membership information either by going to the website or stopping by one of the gift shops or stopping by here. We're open um, Saturday and Sunday, uh, Saturdays from 11 to 3, Sundays from 12 to 3, uh, pretty much during the year. We close at uh, Christmas time, reopen in April. You know, with this beautiful weather, with June right around the corner, comes a big strawberry festival in this area and right on this property here. And I know I've enjoyed coming over here over the years to come over to here and see the folks out here. And I see you have some strawberries here, too. Yes. Are they? Tell us about those strawberries. Well, these are um, ones I, I bought from um, a, local, um, a local vendor, Vince's. Um, I think they're going to be very good on... June 10th, the day before the Strawberry Festival, we'll have a, a army of dedicated workers over here slicing these for the sh Strawberry Shortcake at the Strawberry Festival on, um, on the 11th, June 11th. And um, I don't think these are going to last that long. I don't think so either. You and I will probably finish these up today, uh, right here before the uh, before our segment ends. But for folks who haven't been out to the festival in the past, could you tell the folks out there what happens on that day? Every we celebrate er, basically the county's agricultural history and everything strawberries. We have strawberry shortcake, which we, these will be sliced for. We have uh, strawberries by the pint. We have our famous strawberry wine which is uh, made for us by Solomon's, um, Solomon's Island uh, Winery. And we also have strawberries that are dipped in chocolate. Bald Sauerhammer, who is 90 years old, will, is our, in charge of the um, dipping of the strawberries. And um, basically we will also have crafters and uh, a, a lot of other food, um, roast beef sandwiches. It's a good day from 10 to 3. It's a lot of fun. We get a lot of people in here. It's a nice celebration, not only of the, um, the county's agricultural history, but of our relationship with uh, BWI Airport, which is great. They help out tremendously with um, setting up the um, grounds and providing uh, transportation. We have satellite parking on Aviation Boulevard and a bus that will run all day to bring people over to the uh, festival and back with their strawberries. Well, Skip, before we start digging into these strawberries, could you tell the folks out there real quick, uh, if, just kind of wrap it up, if they want more information on the Historical Society, the Benson Hammond House, or the Strawberry Festival, what are the uh, contact information again? Well, once again, our website, uh, www.aachs.org. And also, you can stop by here, or the uh, Keithy Library, or the Browse and Buy Shop in Severna Park. And I do have a contact number. Let me get that here. Any uh, vendors interesting in, interested in setting up here can call Jam Pumphrey at 410-647-0936. Great. Thanks a lot, Skip. I really appreciate it. For all you folks out there who, who are watching, please come out and support this great group and come out to the Strawberry Festival. As Skip mentioned, these are, these are fresh uh, strawberries right from the area. And we look forward to seeing you all down here, and we'll make sure we bring some strawberries back to the studio. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Mark. We'll all be sure to pay them a visit. 
And if you're looking for more than just strawberries, be sure to visit one of our many farmers markets. There's six locations around the county, including Riva, Deal, Annapolis, Odenton, and Severna Park. For a more detailed list of all the markets, along with their dates and times, go to www.aaedc.org and click on Farmers Markets. Well, as always, our community specialists are really pounding the pavement across the county to bring you all the news and let you know what's happening. They're so busy that we have a third community spotlight for you this week. Our own Bee Poland stopped by the brand new medical clinic on Forest Drive in Annapolis that is provided by Anne Arundel Medical Center. B. Eric, I'm here today at the Anne Arundel Medical Center's Community Health Center at 1419 Forest Drive in Annapolis. With me is the health director, Dr. Scott Eden. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Eden, for allowing us to come visit you. I know you're a busy doctor with a lot mm -hmm. of patients, but uh, sure. we want to tell our citizens about this new center here in Annapolis. Great. What can you tell us about it? Sure. Well, the Community Health Center is a, uh, it's a essentially a private, private practice model for primary care delivery. It's a patient-centered medical home, but it's focusing on providing access to care for people that have a hard time with access to care, which is going to be the medical assistance patients, um, also people that are uninsured, and also the language barrier for the Hispanic population. Okay. What can you tell me about this building that's reused? Right. This building was, uh, this portion of it at least, was vacant for a number of years. I uh, was a medical practice before, and so we've renovated it, and the hospital's done a great job on the renovation. Um, and so it's, it's nice to have the space used as well as to be in the uh, location where our, the people we're trying to serve are located. I noticed it's on the first <clears throat> level when you come in, first floor. Right. Uh, suite 100, and it's uh, once you walk through the doors, it's really transforming. It's beautifully decorated and cheery yes, and right. professional looking. Sure, it looks great. It's, it's nicer than my office now. Is it? Because this one's brand new. What was the hospital's <laughs> uh, mission or intent in doing uh, a center what? here in this location? Well, the hospital has had what they call a 2020 vision, uh, which is trying to reach out in the community and help people that are having trouble with access to care and improve the overall health of the community, not just serve the people that are sick enough to be in the hospital. And this is part of that, that project. And so the, and the hospital has had a community outreach center uh, at a place known as the Stanton Center um, for a number of years, which has done a great job, but we know there's a lot more need than the Stanton Center can provide for the, the need that's out there. So, uh, so this is a different uh, animal in that we are uh, we're, we have a social mission of serving the underserved, but we're also uh, we're charging for our services at reduced rates, and there's a sliding scale available with the idea that if we can um, generate enough uh, income to make this place come close to breaking even, then we can scale it up and have multiple sites and serve many more okay. people than you can out of uh, just a free clinic. And so the free clinic does a wonderful job, and I'm very pleased that it's there, but we're hoping this could expand our reach. Okay, so overall in Anne Arundel County, we have a population that's underserved. We know that right. there are, what, what's the census it's, figures well, tell us? Well, I think that well, the, the population is about 530,000 for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, 57,000 people are, are uninsured by the oh, last count. That's a lot of people. Yeah, and, and 38,000 people have medical assist, some form of medical assistance, okay. which is, makes it hard for them to get a primary care doc. And then, uh, and also about 25,000 Hispanic folks were in the last uh, census, okay. and a significant percentage have a language barrier. Okay, so this center is providing uh, a lot of resources in a new way mm -hmm. for all of Anne Arundel County. Just because it's located here in Annapolis doesn't mean it's only Annapolis or Edgewater folks. It's mm, right. open by appointment. Correct. For anyone in the county. That anyone needs in the care. county. Yes. And I understand it's from babyhood to grandmahood. Right, all ages. We, okay. we see newborns, and okay. you can be as old as you wish to be. Okay. <laughs> so it's just not people who are sick, but you want right. to see people who are healthy and do the healthy care. Right. So we're doing pre preventative services, okay. chronic disease management, as well as acute illnesses and even injuries. Okay. Can um, you talk a little bit about the? Um, the difference, though, in uh, I want people to understand, we have the uh, free clinic at the Stanton Center, right, right on uh, Clay Street in Annapolis, mm -hmm. and then this one's out on Forest Drive, which is on the bus routes. Correct. Um, but essentially, you'll be helping people 
determine where they're best suited to go? Yes, we have a financial counselor who will assess uh, anyone who wishes to be assessed. And if the person qualifies for the sliding scale, then that will be applied. If someone really has no resources, then they would be referred to uh, the outreach center uh, at Stanton because that's the appropriate place for them to be. Um, and, and that's, so we're trying to make that division. Okay. So if someone is without insurance or employed or not, uh, they will get help in determining where they're where they can get the care they need. Right. But this center has really uh, got a mission to reach everyone that needs health care, even mm -hmm. um, people in Deep South County, people in North County, people right. in West County. True, true. And one thing we hope to do by providing the care, by improving someone's health, the diabetic's health, if they're doing better, they're less likely to land in the ER. Mm -hmm. as well as to prevent acute things that might be handled here that right. might end up in the ER otherwise. So it, it's helpful from that perspective as well. So people could start developing a relationship here with the physician and the right. nurse practitioners and, yes. and count on this as being their regular place to go when they need right. health care. Exactly. And the physician and the nurse practitioner here are full-time here, so there's continuity of provider. Okay. So that person will be there. And there's night calls, so if you have a problem in the middle of the night, you can call just like a regular private okay. practice. And, okay. and the night call is bilingual as well as the staff is bilingual. Okay. Um, the Community Health Center serves people who have different insurances, including mm -hmm. uh, medical assistance and priority partners, primary care. Uh, the REACH program, right. including self-pay. Yes. Are there any others that uh, United Healthcare Community and State American Choice? Right. The, the varieties of medical assistance, okay. the, the various programs for medical right. assistance, plus REACH and PAC and self-pay is fine. If okay. you, you can just pay at medical assistance rates okay. uh, and not have to qualify for a sliding scale. All right. Well, could we take a quick tour while we're here? Sure. So people can see Be the space. Delighted to show you. It's a okay. beautiful place. All right. Well, before we oh, yeah. take our tour, I just want to say that uh, if you're interested in coming to the center, you have to call and make an appointment, and that number is 410-990-0050. We will put that up. And the website is www.aahs.org forward slash health center. And uh, you must call. It's not a walk-in clinic. You must call for an appointment, and they're going to treat you just perfectly as a patient they're really caring about. So thank you, doctor, sure. for your time. Thank you, And Be, now appreciate we look forward it. to taking a tour. And now back to you, Eric. Thanks, B, and thanks to Dr. Eden. I'm sure the facility will fill an important need in this Annapolis area community. Well, we're always encouraging folks to take advantage of the wonderful programs at the Department of Aging and Disabilities. This week, Mary Felter sits down to talk with Sandy Berkeley about the new services for seniors directory. Mary? Thank you, Carla. Today my guest is Sandy Berkeley, who's the director of our Information and Assistance Program at the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities. Welcome to the program, Sandy. Thank you for inviting me. I wanted you here today to talk about this brand new book that we have put out. It's called Services for Seniors, Adults with Disabilities, and Caregivers, and it's the new edition this month. Tell me a little bit about the directory, and I know that we've put this together through the years. Who does do all the work? Well, it's a joint effort between the Department of Aging and Disabilities and our editor, What's Up? Um, at the media, uh, What's Up Media Group is what they're called. Mm -hmm. And we are partnered with also the Senior Services Providers Group, which is a group of businesses and programs in the community that serve seniors and adults with disabilities. And I understand they purchase advertising in the directory, which pays for this? The, per, yes, the businesses, these pro businesses from the providers group purchase advertisements as well as do other businesses in the community that uh, find this a, a wonderful um, way to get services to seniors in the community. And what happens with the net proceeds from the advertising sales? What do they use the money for? That's the exciting part about the, the what we do with this directory is that we are, um, the, the proceeds are the profits that from this production is, are used, um, are given to Friends of Arundel Seniors, which is a nonprofit um, program in the community that provides uh, 
safety equipment to seniors and adults with disabilities. I understand they've helped about 400 seniors per year with this service? Oh yes, at least 400 and it's, it's a very exciting program. They provide all kinds of equipment like um, shower tubs, um, transfer benches, raised toilet seats, uh, grab bars for, for tubs, and things like large house numbers that people can put so that uh, e the EMS and fire can find their houses quickly if they need to. And I understand in the directory this year you put in a page that talks about what the Friends of Arundel Seniors do. Yes, we, and that, it, that would be a good page to go and read to find out exactly uh, what they do. It's, the group is totally a volunteer group. All of the profits from the directory uh, are used for this safety equipment. There's no one um, in that organization gets paid for what they do. The Kiwanis Clubs and uh, Partners in Care provide the, 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 the labor, the labor um, in, in installing all of this equipment. So there's no, um, there's no cost uh, for, for the labor. That's incredible. And what else is new in the directory this year? What did you add? We added some informational pieces to the directory this year that we hadn't um, done before, and we're very excited about that because we felt that the, the, those people that are reading the directory, especially baby boomers and caregivers in particular, um, need some information beyond just resources where they can go. So we have several pages of information um, in the directory this year from rental housing, um, how to apply for rental housing, uh, what is rental housing in the community. We have pages for um, legal services, where you can find legal services in the community. Um, we have a page for caregivers, information about uh, identifying yourself as a caregiver and what you need to know as a caregiver and where to find resources for caregivers. Um, we have a page on uh, preparing to uh, apply for entitlement programs at the Department of Social Services, what you need when you go there to uh, apply. Um, not that they always have to go there in person because we have other uh, ways that we can assist people in the community to apply for those resources. I know it's very, very helpful to know that in advance. So if you're going to go to an office somewhere to apply, like the Department of Social Services in Annapolis or Glen Burnie, you've got the documents that they need to have in order to expedite your concern. Absolutely, because we don't want people having to run back and forth because they forgot to take something. So we wanted to prepare them. Um, for that. We can also assist them at the Department of uh, Aging and Disabilities with the completion of those applications if, um, if we need to. Um, some people aren't able to get physically to um, the Department of Social Services. They also can access um, many of the entitlement applications online and that we have um, resources, uh, online resources that we can refer people to so that they can do it themselves online. That's really helpful. So tell me a little bit, um, I understand you did something for veterans this year. You did a section on veterans. We've added veterans um, because of the BRAC move, movement of people into Anne Arundel County. We felt we needed to um, highlight some resources for veterans. We've also highlighted some more resources for adults with disabilities um, and um, other particular interest groups like caregivers that need uh, additional resources, support groups, that, that type of thing. And I understand that you even put in a page about how one could become a sponsor or a partner with a department because we put on so many programs, uh, like the future is now, are you ready? We are doing a lot of programs in the community and of course it costs money to do some of those programs. Um, the Future is Now uh, programs are done in the evenings and we try to spotlight uh, programs and services that are especially um, of interest to uh, baby boomers so that they are prepared, either they're prepared to help their parents 
or they're, they're prepared to help themselves um, so that things don't happen and, and, and they, they come to us in crises. Um, they'll be prepared and know where to go um, when situations occur. So I understand you've crammed it full of very good material um, and it can be useful to anyone that's even living here or out of state. Um, how can someone who's out of state access this information? We have the entire directory on our website and that website is www.aacounty.org forward slash aging and you can go to the face page on that website and you can find the directory um, a link for the directory and you can read every page on the direct on on the website um, we also have distributed the direct directories throughout the community you can get them at the libraries at all seven of our senior centers um, we have them of course in our offices and our staff all of our staff take them out with them into the community and drop them off at places where they think that seniors and and um, the disabled adults um, can get them. Um, in June, we're, they're going to be out at um, several of the um, uh, grocery, stores. grocery stores, like they're gonna be at a CV, uh, in addition to the grocery stores, they're gonna be at CVS and Wawa. Um, well, I know you print, we print about 50,000 copies of these things, so do. obviously we want people to come and pick them up and use them. Ab absolutely, and then they can call us um, anytime for, t for additional information about anything in the directory or call us and to find out where they can get the directory uh, and anything else um, that we have that we publish. We publish a lot of materials um, for the community and um, are more than willing to give them out to the community when they call. What number should they call? You should call the Maryland Access Point number which is our information and assistance line is 410-222-4257. Okay, we'll post that here on our screen so people can find out the number. Sandy, thank you so much for coming in today and telling people about our services for seniors, adults with disabilities, and caregivers directory. Uh, there is a lot of information in it. It's about 80 pages long, maybe even longer. Has a lot of uh, indexes and a table of contents so that you can find what services are available and who can help you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Mary. This is Mary Felter, Public Information Officer for the Anne Arundel County Department of Aging and Disabilities for Anne Arundel Week in Review. Back to you, Carla. Thanks, Mary. We'll be sure to pick up a copy because there's so much for our seniors to do in Anne Arundel County. There's a lot to do in Anne Arundel County. There is. And you know the good thing, Carla, we had a busy, busy week this week. Yes. Passed the budget. The good news is about 99%, 98.5% of the budget that the county executive submitted, the council adopted. Of course, mm -hmm. they always make changes. They have to. That's their job. They right. are the final fiscal authority, and it's their job to, to make changes, and they did that, and uh, you know, we're, we're pleased with the outcome that we've gotten. Yes, I think everyone's pleased, and another big event happened yesterday. It was the unveiling of the uh, ambulance bus at the I, training were center. Were you a... Um, patient or what, what I, did, you, I was, did you play a role in this I was you to tell I, us a bit I volunteered about that. I just to help out uh, Chief Cox and others at the fire department mm. I was a victim that oh was, you were a victim yes I was yeah. rescued from a burning building and taken to the ambulance well, bus you, you don't look like you have any burn you look okay for just being yeah. in a uh, <laughs> burning building yesterday well, the fire, our fire department does wonders yes folks. a day has great. passed and now you're so, fine yes oh, thanks great. to the great services on the ambulance bus that is great well, it's good to be back. You know, two weeks out of uh, out of the show, I kind of miss being here. I kind of miss the uh, interacting with the people of the county, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. Health's better and uh, feeling strong and ready to get to some sports. Excellent. Good day, sports fans. Well, graduations and senior proms bring us to an end of another great high school sports season. We lead off today with the incredible Chesapeake Cougars ladies softball squad, who have been a normal fixture in the postseason play for the last 10 years. On Wednesday, the Cougars took on Montgomery Blair in the Class 4A state semifinals. Pitcher Megan Heisen not only did the job on the mound, but she was able to produce at the plate as well. In the bottom of the first, she drove a line drive off the right field fence and was able to turn it into an inside the park home run. This would be the only run the Cougars would need as Heisen was dominant on the mound, throwing a no-hitter and only allowing one walk. 
the Cougars move on to the finals again with an 8-0 victory. More good news on the ball diamond came from Spalding this week as the Cavaliers baseball squad were looking to capture the state title for the first time in 30 years. Jamal Clark and Nick Freeberger provided the offensive punch with a solo and a two-run homer as the Cavaliers were able to jump out to an early lead against Calvert Hall. Spalding ace Austin Clark was able to manage the game from the mound, only allowing four runs as Spalding took home the state title 7-4 over Calvert Hall. And finally today, it looks as if South River will be celebrating this weekend as the boys lacrosse squad has done it again, bringing home a state 3A, 4A crown back to Edgewater for the second time in three years. The South River offensive attack of Ben Chisholm, Dylan Louisa, and Joey Papati were too much as they defeated Langalore this year. Well, for this week's Recreation and Parks Spotlight, Recreation Specialist Carolyn Ryan has ventured into the depths of Anne Arundel County to explore one of Recreation and Parks' best kept secrets, the Anne Arundel Archers Archery Program for our youth and adults. Carolyn. Thanks, Eric. We're here at Anne Arundel Archers with Sue Weinstein and Hi. Ronald Thompson, Thompson. Uh, both of Anne Arundel Archers. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, what can you tell us about Anne Arundel Archers? Uh, we're a club that's on county property, and one of the things that we do each year is have classes in the spring and the fall for five weeks on Saturdays um, to teach people how to shoot archery. Great. And we Good. furnish the equipment for them uh, through the county, and um, we have uh, the age groups of the uh, children here are usually from eight, and then we have adult classes also. And uh, we have about how many acres is this? 52 yeah, acres. 52 acres here. You know, it's open to the public. Uh, this area here is, and uh, we say we we hope to get you know some people to join our tree. You know, out out of this. So, anything else? Well, you guys are a little off the beaten path here, but you're really not too far. It seems like you're a little further out than you are, but you're in Crofton, right off of Route 3, mm -hmm. um, and you have, it's kind of, you have an open area, people can come in and shoot, plus right. you have the classes, and tell us, can you give us a little background about Anne Arundel Archers? Uh, the, the club uh, originated down in uh, Mari, it used to be called uh, Baltimore uh, b and Bowman, and uh, we changed the name to Anne Arundel Archers. And uh, we've been down here uh, since 1973 in this particular area here. And uh, it's really a nice facility. Uh, like I say, it's a, really a, a pretty park down here. So. Great. Now you offer three classes on Saturdays. And what are the ages again? They start, the youngest group is from 8 to 10 year olds. The next group is 11 to 13. And the last group is 14 to adult. Okay. Great. So a little something for just about every age group. Great. And if uh, our viewers want more information, they can go to our website, www.aacounty.org slash recparks, or give us a call at 410-222-7313. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Carolyn. Well, it's Memorial Day weekend. It is. The long weekend. Long weekend. Gotta love long weekends. The unofficial start of summer. Oh, I think it's, it's I, okay, it's not technically the start of summer, but it's when all the pools open. Yes. It's when everyone yes. has barbecues and gets out, and so, yeah. Yep. I, th I think the, we can call it that. The weather's starting to feel like summer. It is, I mean, especially this week. 90 yeah. the last couple of days. It's been hot. Yeah. But we had a, I tell you, it's been one of these years where we really had a spring this year. Normally, normally I know. we don't get that springtime 70 degrees, but there was two, three weeks straight that it was 72 almost every day. Yeah, so that was nice. It was very nice. <laughs> very nice. So any big weekend plans? Uh, always do a strawberry picking with the kids. They love it. They absolutely love it. Uh, my little ones, three and four, and some neighbor's kids, we go out to a little farm, and uh, the kids just love to pick the strawberries, eat them, they get all red and messy, and you, know, you bring them back, and they got their big thing of strawberries, and it's just great photo Throw opportunities. Right in the tub. Right in the tub, <laughs> great memories. So we pick strawberries, and then we have a nice little you know, community. Neighbors get together yeah. and eat strawberry, strawberry pie, strawberry yeah, this. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's good. It's a good, good idea. Good time. You? Yeah. Um, nothing too big. Uh, I have big plans next weekend, but this weekend just kind of relaxing with friends, doing a little barbecuing. Well, after Maybe being some... a victim I know. yesterday, it's, you need it's some It's hard. I think I need to kind of sit out in the sun for a while and, there you and go. just relax. Maybe do a few house projects. Absolutely. Well, keep in mind it's Memorial Day weekend, and yes, folks are off, but keep in mind the real meaning of Memorial Day is to support our, uh, 
our brave men and women that are fighting every day to protect us and keep us safe. Well, Carla, that's going to wrap this show up. That wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are available at blip.tv and YouTube. You can also subscribe to the free video podcast at iTunes. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around your county. We'll see you next time.